All right, it's time for official disassembling and cleaning of this machine. So let's get to that. Now, first and foremost, before you do this, make sure you disconnect the washer from the wall outlet. So then all you need for now is a Phillips screwdriver. There's two screws here on the front of the control panel. You need to remove those in order to open the controls panel. To reveal the brains of the machine. So here's your timer and this one it looks like they uh, on the older ones, for some reason, they decided to place the or position the capacitors, the start capacitors for the motor, up here next to the timer. So that's interesting. So and then all the wires go into everything else. So and then we need to, what we need to do next here is disconnect this Molex connector for the lid switch. And it looks like there's a ground wire here. I don't know if that's necessary for removal. Probably not. Then we need to take a flathead screwdriver and pry these. Don't do that. Pry these uh, clips out, holding the cabinet to the frame. So we'll set those aside, and then we can open the lid and grab the under lip here. Pull forward and remove. And there we are, the naked Kenmore 60 series direct drive washer. So upon first glance, here's what we have to work with. So this is what you got. So for those of you washer twerps out there, you already know the drill with these direct drives. So everything here looks like that clutch has had its day. Certainly, but uh, that's uh, probably just uh, probably just grease. I don't know how that might have happened, but uh, something splashed out, or I don't. If, uh, I don't know if that's like gear case grease or what that is, but so and looking up there, I don't know if you can really see much up there. Very dirty, I'm gonna to have to clean all this out. It looks like there's even a, like a, um, a bottom base panel or whatever. So, yeah, another feature, I guess, of the early direct drives. So, very interesting indeed. So, and of course, older style drain pump. It's like a real hard plastic, dark gray. And the motor, of course, as well. The wire harness on this side. Um, yeah, some some little anomalies here and there. I'm gonna have to see what the deal is with that. Um, and then here, everything with the uh, the water inlet. So, yeah, and warm rinse. Modif a warm rinse option is very easy to accomplish with these, so that should be no problem. So this is probably gonna need cleaning. Yeah, a little bit of cleaning here and there. Looks like the cellar already kind of sort of, you know, cleaned up a little bit of what was there. I don't know what this discoloration is. I guess that's just from years of years of use I don't know what it is but oh and I, I forgot to mention too that uh, reminds me that um, having this machine sit in the shed for a day it um, it exhumed a very or exuberated if, if uh, that's the correct word for um, my lack of memory here but um, yeah it put off a real weird odd smell like a real musty smell and I don't know what it is if it's just from 
years of use or what it is, but it's real musty. It's not like um, any of the uh, any of the other machines I have. So yeah, I'll have to see if there's a way to maybe get rid of that or what. It looks like there's a lot of like hard water crap and you know detritus everywhere. So definitely got some work to do. Really uh, just going to start with like a quick wiping down um, with a wet rag maybe and I don't know. We'll see where it goes from there. I much need clean. Alright so I got everything ready. Got my wash basin there full of hot water and some cleaner and a rag. I'm using this stuff. I showed this, uh, used this last, last time when I got the Whirlpool. You can find this at uh, Dollar Tree, I think, it has this that you can buy in a spray bottle. And yeah, total LA's totally awesome. It's just that it's uh, great for grimy and greasy stuff that you really need to get down and dirty with. Har har. So here we go. Let's get cracking. not too bad I'd say that's pretty good for a machine this age yeah just really just a bunch of grime and dirt that just needs to be scrubbed away no biggie very doable so I'm gonna drop grab a drink real quick here those of you playing the home game for now it's not cold or anything so it's So, just gonna power through here, get this done.
Yeah, really, uh, just, um, for this, I think just some scrubbing ought to be enough, you know, ought to do it quite nicely. I mean, you can already, you can tell already, I mean, other than, you know, some, you know, some staining and whatnot here and there, I think that's pretty good. So, I'll just go ahead and set that aside for now then. I think that's uh, good enough and then, so I'll start cleaning uh, the top of this and then wipe down the bottom, all the bottom here and uh, yeah, see what we get. Again, I don't have the spanner wrench needed to take this inner tub out. So I'm just gonna have to make do with what I got and just scrub all around here and you know get it try and get as much down in between the tubs as I can. So but other than that that's about as good as it's gonna get. Oh yeah look at all that like this is all like fuzz and just a bunch of dust. Probably because it sat so long it just dried up. So it's not real grimy or anything. It'll just come right, it'll just scrub right off real nicely. And then the rest falls down in there. We'll just get, you know, I'm gonna maybe run a cleaning cycle if I have time. Run a cleaning cycle through here. Oh man. Yeah, this is all gonna have to be swept up once I'm finished here. I was mentioning about the smell earlier that I smelled it in the last video, or I think it's this video, yeah. I mentioned earlier in this about the smell from this machine. I think what it is, is it's probably an artifact of like the leftover detergent uh, gunk that sat in here all these years from I guess the kind of detergent they were using back then, I don't know. Because judging based on the way this thing is kind of aged here, I'd say this probably hasn't been used in a while. This is all like coming out, like all dry and everything. Just loosening up with a toothbrush.
Well, for the tub, I think uh, I think that's pretty good. A lot of the discoloration that was here came off pretty much with a little bit of scrubbing. I'm not going to worry really about the agitator. I think that's I think that's pretty good for now. A lot of that's just discoloration. It won't matter. And down in there, it's actually not too bad, as far as I can tell. Probably just run a cleaning cycle through there and we should be good to go. I think, really, I think the only thing I need to do is wipe down the base of it and that'll be it. And then perhaps I can uh, run a cleaning cycle through here. Yeah, the rust in this machine overall, I think, is actually not too terrible. Not as bad as I was expecting. You know, there is, like, some here and there, but that'll, you know, that doesn't, I don't think that'll really matter. It'll, it won't affect the performance of the machine. But that's not to say, though, that there isn't a possible leak somewhere. I'll have to fill this with water and see if uh, we get leakage anywhere. I think I'm just going to go ahead and skip the rest of this because you, you know the drill. This is just straightforward clean and wipe, wipe down. Well, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to wrap it up here real quick. Um, I'm going to have to come back tomorrow and finish this up. But uh, I did a quick wipe down of everything down here. So I took this uh, bottom panel out too. There's two um, belt driver screws holding in on either side there. So I took that out. Scrubbed it down, rinsed it off with the hose, and dried it off real quick, and put it back in. And I just gave a quick wipe down of everything else. Definitely better than it was. I'm not worrying about perfect here or anything right now. Um, wipe the transmission down a little bit. And I don't know, it's going to be... Uh, Hard to see here with the angle of my monopod here, but right there and up in there too, you can kind of see there's definitely gear oil slinging going on here, so that's uh, that's cause for concern here. I don't know. We'll have to see. Real quick, I'm going to do a quick water test on low and just make sure there's no leaks or anything real quick before I wrap it up. So I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, I just have it set on, I'll set it to rinse and spin for now and I'll just uh, fill it up with the hose here. So, yeah, okay, I hear the valves buzzing. So, throw it up to the here. I got the drain hose suspended there for now, so it can drain. You can see it there filling up. I'm gonna check everywhere for leaks. Flash around quite a bit because it's on low. And I haven't done like any adjusting of the water level switch. I 
other than like a lot of dirt and crap built up from over the years and some, you know, scum here and there and just discoloration really. That's really about it for this machine as far as uh, dirt is concerned. So it's actually, it was actually pretty clean for how old it was. Probably, judging by the, how little dirt and rust there was, it was, probably wasn't used that heavily in its life, I'd wager. I'm actually going to set it to medium here a little bit, a little bit higher so that way it doesn't splash around so much. Probably as soon as it reaches the bottom of those copper upper fins, then I'll stop it or stop filling. Probably about there ought to be good. Okay. So I'll go ahead and see if it'll. There we are. They're aggulating. Tells me the water level switch is working, at least. Yeah. So I'm gonna check for leaks here. See how we're doing. Freaking dog. So far, I'm not really seeing much in the way of uh, tub leaks, tub seal leaks. Oh, I'm just noticing that screeching. That screeching sound it's making. I don't know what that is. Okay, I guess we're going in a drain. Maybe, or not. Oh, I see. Right, because, yeah, the bypass is, uh, <laughs> Not really truly bypassed. I got to stick a thing in there. That's why. Hang on. Yeah, I stuck that. Stuck the uh, jumper in the lid switch Molex thing there. That should work now. Anyway. I don't like that squealing. Yeah, you can see there's oil. Yeah, right there. And there. Slung. 
I think that's going to need uh, repair shortly, unfortunately. But at the moment, it seems to be working. I don't know, perhaps if that squealing is just from it sitting for a while, not getting ran, I don't know. So anyway, I was checking for leaks. Here to be dry here and here. Same thing here. Yep. Drain is good. I'm not seeing any dripping anywhere. Watch a little bubble burst. Agulate, agulation. So momentarily we should be going into mutual drain and then spin, hopefully. draining pretty splendidly so far see how our neutral drain rum 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 sound is if you can hear Dry. And we should be going into spin momentarily. Basically, the overall condition of it, the only real yeah, that wobbles quite a bit.
acceleration of the spin clutch and the um, tightness of the brakes seem to be pretty good on this one. Yeah, like I said, the only real uh, possible issue I see here is the uh, transmission oil. That's probably why it's squeaking when it uh, agitates. So, going to have to fix that probably. let that finish its spin cycle and then I'll put it back together and we'll uh, have to come back tomorrow and run an actual cleaning cycle through here and then possibly even a load of towels who knows we'll see anyway in the meantime that's gonna do it for this one so thanks so much for watching please hit like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Take care.